<laughs> yeah, so this is one of our cryogenic transport tankers. So this is gonna, we actually have this set up to hold liquefied natural gas. So in this vessel, the unique design for this is there actually, there's an inner vessel and an outer vessel. So between the two vessels, they pull a vacuum to hold the cryogenic liquid in liquid state. So for us, liquefied natural gas is taking pipeline gas and going through and refrigerating it down to minus 260 degrees. So the purpose of this vessel is it's gonna hold that liquid at minus 260 degrees until the point in time that we're ready to use it. Okay, so where you put the gas in? Yeah, so the, the liquid, we have a couple different connections here. So we do have a connection here, which is our liquid in connection. So liquid will go in and either we can put it to the top of the tank or the bottom of the tank. <laughs> And where you liquefy the stuff? Uh, so PG&E, we actually don't liquefy it within PG&E. We actually buy it from other vendors, and those vendors actually are the ones that, that do do it. So out in Boron, California, is where we do have the plant that we go through to make that happen. I see. And so the pressure here that you're reaching is yes. about... So right now there's residual pressure. This is a 96-pound rated vessel. So it right now does have about 23 pounds or so of just... Uh, vapor inside there. There's no actual liquid in the tank right now. So for this demonstration event, we didn't bring a full tanker for it. So it just basically is a positive pressure of a methane vapor right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you use this one for? Sure, we'll go on the side here and okay. kind of go over. So <clears throat> we need to be able to process the liquefied natural gas back into a gaseous state um, and be able to put it back in our pipeline system. So we use this trailer for that. So what this is, is basically uh, an LNG ambient heat exchange trailer. So we'll have some of the liquid go through. The liquid will do a phase change to a gas just by using the aluminum fin banks. The unique thing for us would be this aluminum is basically going to be able to be the heat sink for the liquid running through. So as, as the liquid goes through, the aluminum will be a heat sink to that to turn that liquid to a gas. So it's a multi-pass heat exchanger. So as it goes up and down, It'll work from one end of the heat exchanger to the other. By the time it reaches the outlet side, the liquid would have turned to a gas pretty close to whatever ambient temperature is. Mm -hmm. So you feed the homes directly from this one? Uh, yes, so we can feed homes directly from this. So we will we still turn this to a gas. LNG itself is unodorized, so there's no odor to it. And so once we turn it back to a gas, we actually have to inject a little bit of odor in it its smell before we inject it into our pipeline system so that customers can still detect the smell of gas. Can we see the sure. injection? So you need four heat sinks. So we do four and the reason for four is as you flow liquid through one it's going to develop frost and you're going to lose airflow through that unit. So we're usually airflow working through the unit to be able to turn that liquid to a gas so as the ice does build up we would go through a mode to where we actually are always running on three of the four banks. One is always defrosting. So, so you're running in parallel? Uh, yeah, three of them in parallel, uh, the one just off. The last, the last one? The last one. But after an hour or so, we turn the last one off and then turn the first, I mean, turn the last one on and then go back to the first one and turn that off so it can defrost. We basically want all the ice that it's developed to be able to defrost off. And that's kind of where we're showing in the pictures there of okay. what it looks like when we defrost it. So it's an odor tank. Okay. Yes. So we'll go through and add a little bit of odorant to the pipeline gas stream before we send it off the trailer to tie into the uh, injection point. Mm -hmm. So one thing for our trailers and what we demonstrate by the pictures is um, because we're running the cold product through that, it, if we're in high humid areas, it'll develop some of the fog cloud that you can kind of see. So that's not a gas leak or anything. That's just us developing some fog just because that liquid is trying to phase change to a gas. So why so many of them here? Yeah. So you can see from, you can see from here, is this defrost mode. After a while, we'll drop ice in there just because um, it'll go through the frost. We'll have some collection of ice uh, when we operate the unit. So, so this is really So this is just a small one? Yeah, so we actually have smaller units. So we have units that are set up to support single customers, um, little larger commercial customers, 
to where here you may do larger areas paired with the compressed natural gas tube trailers. So we basically say we have enough equipment to take care of a single person up to a single town if needed with our equipment. What is this natural gas? Yeah, so natural gas compressed. So um, this gives us an ability, if we had flow rates that are a little lower than the LNG equipment, LNG is going to be for the larger flow rate type responses. So if we have lower flow rate responses, we would use compressed natural gas. So we can go to the back of the trailer, you can see the connections there. But so basically, um, these are, um, this one's an eight pack of compressed natural gas cylinders that uh, store the pressure up to 2400 PSI. Um, what we need to do is be able to take this gas and put it in our pipeline system to maintain customers. So we need to go through and take that 2400 pounds and cut it down to a pressure before we inject it into our pipeline system. What's the pressure in the pipeline? Uh, typical distribution for us between 50 to 60 pounds. So, PSI. PSIG, sorry. So these eight bottles are basically manifolded together so that once you come on site, you would open all the valves so they would all equalize to be basically one single bottle. So we don't, we'd go through and on site, open all the valves so we'd get the full capacity of that trailer to be able to offload and inject into the pipeline system. So for us, we just basically do on pressure demand because it's 2,400 pounds and our pipeline system is 50. So we need to go through a pressure letdown to be able to get that uh, um, 2,400 pounds down to 50. So we go through what we call a regulation trailer. So this is basically to go through what we call three stages of regulation. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through and basically do a pressure cut from 2,400 pounds to maybe seven, 800 pounds. Uh, then we'll actually send the gas through the fins to be able to actually pick up some heat. Once we do pick up some heat, we'll then go through the next stage of regulation, go from 800 pounds or so down to maybe three, 400 pounds. Again, go pick up some heat from the fin banks, come back to our third and final cut and take that three, 400 pounds and drop it to 50 pounds, go through to a final stage of regulation, I'm sorry, final change of heat exchange to pick up temperature before now sending the gas out and connect to the pipeline system. What is a yellow pipe up there? Uh, that's our common vent stack. So when we want to, we make a connection and we want to vent some gas, we make sure to vent it high in a safe area so that we're not venting gas down below where we are working at. Thank you. Mm -hmm.